Hello. Hey, Mike. What's up, man? How are you? What's up, Matt? Not a lot. I'm, I'm curious. I know you're an East Coast guy. How is the, it's a weird question. How is the air quality where you are? I don't know. Smoky. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Smoky. Some of the, some of the photos out of New York City are insane, man. No, they are. You know, it's funny. We were rehearsing, well, the last couple of days, but two days ago, it was, I, I had no idea because I'm up super early and I just put the news on the TV, you know, feeding the kids before school or whatever. And they're, they always talk, oh my God, the smoke. And like, I don't see anything. I, I walked out of rehearsal the other night and I was like, oh my God, you couldn't. <laughs> crazy. I'll yeah, tell you. Like an, go ahead. I was going to say, it's like an apocalypse out there. Yeah, it was funny. We did a uh, we did a gig last year and I think it was, I want to say it was Reno. And the smoke was so bad from the California. I mean, you couldn't see like a block and a half. So, I mean, I, you know, that was, and that was the first time I've ever experienced that, but now we have it here. It's, it wasn't that bad. That was really bad um, there, but um, yeah, I mean, there's some smoke around. It's Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, thankfully it'll be, it'll be clearing out before you guys hit the road. So you don't have to worry about it too much. And we'll talk about the the tour with uh, Godsmack that's coming up this summer and everything you guys have got going on. But I want to start and go back to 2014 stain decides hiatus time. You guys want to work on some other projects. You do the Newstead thing in St. Sonia. Aaron's got this solo project that, you know, takes off when you sure. guys go on hiatus back in 2014, did you, was the plan originally, was the plan always at some point when we decide to go get back together and do this again, it's going to happen. Or was there sort of a, an iffy period where you didn't know where it was going to go? Well, I mean, I always hoped that that would happen. You know what I mean? And it was, you know, Aaron wanted to pursue his country career and kind of felt like, you know, doing stained was something that would be detrimental to to what that would be. You know what I mean? He had to show, you know, the country people I'm, you know, country guy, you know. So, um, yeah, and I was able to go off and do a few other things, which was, you know, which was great. Um, play with some really great people, musicians. And, you know, um, thankful that I was able to do that. That being said, I'm very thankful that, you know, we're back together and doing this because, I mean, this is really, you know, kind of what I started, you know, with with Aaron, you know, I mean, whatever, however, 28 years ago, whatever it was, 27 years ago, I mean, whatever it was, you know, so it's great to be able to be back making music again and uh, looking forward to going out and doing these shows. Yeah, at one point, Aaron had said, I think, you know, 2018, that that Stain would never tour extensively again. And then it was, what, a year later that you guys announced the reunion tour and you guys are planning on going back out with Disturbed, even though that, you know, you know, right. pandemic shuts that down. How do you go from one extreme? We're not going to tour well, extensively. And then and then now you guys are you guys were planning on going back out on the road. I think it's your definition of extensively. So <laughs> like, extensively, it was like when we used to put out a record, you know, we'd be gone for 15, 18 months right. home for, you know, I mean, out for, you know, two months home for a few days back. I mean, that's extensively, you know, going out and doing a summer tour for six weeks, taking off, you know, a few months and doing some more shows here. And that's, that's kind of spacing it out and allowing you to, you know, I mean, listen, two more years, my kids are graduating. You know, I don't want to, I want to be able to be around for, you know, for them and you know what they do and, you know, not really miss out on that, you know? So, I, and I got to say that was, for me, that was kind of one of the benefits too. I was able to, to be here, you know, a little bit more often. I'm actually, you know, thankful for that too, you know? So, you know, it, it sort of it goes around uh, away from this whole rock star aesthetic, you know, to to hear somebody say, you know, it was nice to get off the road, to be home for family time and to be home. I'm going to be able to be home to see my kids graduate. You know, the, the days of the rock star lifestyle sort of stuff. That's, you know, people aren't doing that as much anymore. There are guys like yourself that that dig being home and want to be a part of be a part of, you know, their kids lives and growing up and seeing everything that happens. Well, obviously, you're never going to get the time back. You're never going to get it again. Right. So actually, I was. uh I was working with Johnny K recently on on something and uh you know he has kids and you know it, he said something that it really hit me and I don't I don't know if there's any truth to this statement at all that I'm about to say but he basically said that you spend and it was some random number like 93% of your kids life is that you spend with them happens before the age of 18 and I was like oh my you know what I mean I don't want that to be the case you know what yeah, I mean right. so um actually made me sad. I was like, no, <laughs> not the case. But uh, anyways, you know, um, yeah, I just, I just enjoy, you know, being with them and around them. And it's, you know, like I said, you're not going to, you're not going to get that time back. So. 
So it was announced back in, you know, 2019 that you guys are going to get back together. You're going to do the reunion tour. You played a couple of festival shows and things. And then the pandemic happens. How bummed out were you to now five years later, you guys agree, let's go back out on the road. Let's do this tour. And now the the breaks are basically everything stops, everything shut down and you don't get to go do that tour. How how big of a bummer was that for you guys? I mean, it, it was and, I, and it was one of those things where nobody knew and everything kind of get kept in pushed off and postponed and post finally it was like, all right, this isn't going to happen. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was, but I, I think I always knew that, you know, ultimately we would be, we would be able to get back out there and do it, you know? And uh, I keep talking about the family thing. I mean, honestly, that was for us, you know, here, I mean, I, and I know it was a tough time for a lot of people, but it was a, I just enjoyed being, everything stopped. So there's nothing else to do. So it was like, my son didn't have, you know, baseball every day. My daughter wasn't at the barn riding her horses every day. So we were just here and we had some great times together. You know what I mean? It was, I actually look back on that and yeah, I mean, it was, it was great. But I have to imagine that knowing that you guys were finally going to go out and play these shows, you guys had to be itching to, to get out there. Can you tell me once you guys finally get to go out and do that first tour, you're playing those shows with corn. Can you tell me what it was like those first shows back on stage, looking over, seeing Aaron, seeing the rest of the band together on stage for the first time. Yeah, it was, it was great. And I mean, I, I mean, and I, I had felt that I'll, t- I'll tell you, there was, I go back to this one time, Aaron had asked me, he would do these uh, benefit gigs up, up in by where we are, Northampton mass for a foundation that he had. And he had asked me to play it. I want to say it was 2017, I think. And I remember we had done, we would just do like a bunch of, you know, cover songs, acoustic things. And, uh, I remember walking off stage to that. And I think I said to my wife, I'm like, man, I, and I just missed, you know, hearing his, and he's just such a, I was still blown away by how, you know, great of a vocalist, you know, that Aaron is. Cause I mean, he really is. And, uh, you know, so to be able to go back and do that in 2019. And then, like you said, ultimately in 2021 to get back on stage and, you know, do that corn tour. I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was great. And I was just, you know, real happy that we were, we were back working again. Was the initial plan, once you guys decided to get back together and do these shows, was it just the tour or did you always think there was also going to be music to go along with that? No, there was always, there was always talk of doing music, you know? I mean, like, even when we were off, I feel like (laughs) it it was funny. I, I felt it was almost like clockwork. I remember like Aaron would call me like randomly and I'd, I'd always be at this, it's like the same place, like this indoor soccer place that my son's soccer game. I'm like, Oh, it's Aaron. You know what I mean? And, and we would kind of talk about that, you know, ultimately, you know, but it, we knew it was in the future. We never had any plans. And, you know, then it, then it finally started to come together, whatever. I want to say 2018, I think, you know, we started talking about it. And honestly, that corn tour was really where a lot of the, the record got put together was, was on that. I mean, I was working every day and, you know, we, I was able to demo a lot of the songs on that tour and able to get Aaron in a room and say, you know, listen to some of the music and, you know, get some direction from him of, you know, where he wanted it to go and some changes that he wanted to make and what he liked and what he didn't like. So, um, a lot was done on that and really gave me, you know, the foundation and, you know, kind of a roadmap of where, you know, where things should go. So it was, it was actually really productive and a really good time. When you're able to spend time together, when you're able to sit down and listen to songs and riffs and things you guys have done, do do you feel that spark that you hear so many people talk about that, you know, Mike being with Aaron, there's this certain relationship. There's something that happens when you two are together that doesn't happen with anyone else. Did you guys feel that once you guys got to the chance to get back together and do this again? Yeah, it's. I mean, I do think that there, you know, um, you know, there is there is that, and I, I'm I'm very thankful. You know, I think that. You know, and a lot of times for me in writing music, you, there's certain ways a song can go and I'll overthink things sometimes and I'll like rewrite a verse like five different ways. And it's great to have somebody else, whether it's Aaron or even a producer sometimes to say, hey, what what's the best direction for this? You know, and a lot of times I'll just have I just kind of pick it myself, you know, but it doesn't mean that that's, you know, the best way to do it. You know, and especially if it's something that Aaron has to sing over, I need to know what he, you know chord progressions or where he hears it going as well, you know? So I, I do think that he, you know, really plays a part in helping taking what I do and, and making it better. Um, I, I will say though, I, I do, 
you know, working with Adam and, you know, my other band, Santa Sony, I mean, Adam's, Adam's great to work with too. I mean, it's, you know, I, I feel very fortunate to, you know, having been able to, to work with both those guys are two of my favorite singers. You've got the new album. It's going to be out here soon. Confessions of the Fallen and a lot can change in, in 10 years. I mean, the last album that you guys released was back in 2011. Yeah. Did you notice, I mean, just even the recording, the writing process, how much you guys had changed in the course of the last time you wrote an album together? Well, I mean, if anybody watched, <laughs> we we kind of captured the la the last record that we made was <laughs> is probably good. We took a break. I mean, it was really hard to make. That being said, I mean, I it's one of my favorite Stain records. I really love the way that that record came out. I mean, it was once we were able to kind of you know step back and get away from it for a minute. You know, I I just really there's some songs in there that I you know I think I I'm really proud of. You know. Um, you know, and I can say the same for this one. I mean, this one, I mean, it was it was made a lot differently than any record that we had done before. I mean, other than that time on the corn tour, getting to get, we, it was really Eric, the producer, that kind of was a, taking these, you know, song ideas that we had and presenting them really to Aaron because him and I would, you know, take those arrangements. We'd put them together Um you know, and Eric played a part in, you know, adding some of the electronic elements that Aaron really wanted to hear on this. And, you know, he would present them to Aaron because Aaron's mostly in Nashville. I I live in Connecticut and, you know, uh, the producer, and I did a lot, you know, just like this through zoom, you know what I mean? Putting this, taking the songs and the demos that I had and, and really kind of going through with a fine tooth comb and kind of, you know, hopefully solidifying some of the arrangements and, uh, you know, he would take them to Aaron and they would, you know, make whatever changes, you know, further needed to be made. And, and that's how we would, you know, start with, you know, where we were going and moving forward with, with each song. So far, the, the only song we've heard is lowest to me. Why was it important for you guys uh, to release a song? That's it, it sounds to me the first time I heard it, it's a throwback to mud shovel. It's a, it's heavy stain. Okay. Why was it important to come with a song like that as opposed to maybe what stain has sort of become known for over the years with the, the more ballady stuff. I don't know. I mean, I think that was a song that everybody kind of just gravitated towards. And I think, you know, like you said, I mean, after being away for, you know, for a little bit, you know, I think it's good to come back with something like that, you know. Um, and and there is there is a bit of, you know, diversity on this record, you know. Um, so, I mean, I like that. I enjoy that. You know what I mean? I think that there's um it, it just and i don't even know if anybody listens to a whole record anymore to be honest <laughs> with you you know what i mean but if you're going to i mean i there's you know there's a lot of different elements on it so i'm yeah i'm, I'm real happy with the way that it turned out does it bum you out as someone who has been in the industry for so long putting out albums does it bum you out now seeing bands that'll do just here's a song here's a song where it's not like I a full know. body of work does it matter I don't know. I mean, listen, everybody does what they want to do. It's all good. You know what I mean? As long as the, what they're putting out is, is cool. And you know what I mean? You're into it. I mean, listen, I mean, is it nice to be able to hear? Cause I mean, sometimes some of my favorite songs are the stuff that's not, you know what I mean? Not the single, you know what I mean? Just because everybody kind of gravitates what they think is going to do well on radio. doesn't mean that it's going to be your, what you're going to like the most, you know what I mean? What's getting shoved down your throat, you know? Right. So, but yeah. yeah, well, I know 2023 is going to be busy for you guys. You've got the tour coming up the Godsmack. You're going to be here uh, in Michigan a couple of times. You're going to play Soaring Eagle on Labor Day, a Monday night rock show with Disturbed, which is uh, which is awesome to know that you guys are coming back to the area because you guys have played the casino over the years a bunch of times. We have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They called and I, 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 it'll be great to play with those guys. They have a new record, which is great. I mean, so, yeah, I mean. I, yeah, I just look forward to, you know, being out with Godsmack. I mean, we've, I, I was just saying, I think the first time we played with them was 1998 on a local stage for the Warp Tour in Northampton, Mass., you know, and uh, they were really blowing up at a local radio station out of Boston. And, you know, we were, it was literally right before we left to go record Dysfunction with Terry Date. And uh, I remember the Deftones were on that bill and, talking to a couple of those guys, which was a big reason between, you know, Deftones and Pantera, why we chose Terry Day to do that first record because our, you know, some of our favorite bands, you know, and uh, yeah, it was just a cool time. And then seeing how, you know, how 
well Godsmack's done over the years and having played, you know, so many shows and toured with those guys. I mean, it's, listen, it's just, it'll be, it'll be fun to be around them. You know, same thing with the disturbed guys. I'll tell you, I remember, I remember the first time meeting them, we were in playing a show in Chicago and their first record was done and we were opening for corn and, uh, they all came into the dressing room and they had the disturbed hockey jerseys and they gave us CDs. And I remember uh, our old drummer playing that CD all the time on the bus and, and it was great. You know what I mean? So it's just cool that here we are, you know, a thousand years later and, you know, still out there doing it. Yeah. I was going to say, it's pretty awesome to, I mean, the, after the grunge era, it's, it's you guys, it's disturbed, it's stained, it's God and that you guys are still out there. You're still playing amphitheaters. You guys are still filling houses and you're playing shows together, which is awesome. Yeah, man, I feel super, super fortunate to be able to do that, that, you know, people still want to come out and hear it. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm just happy to be out there doing it with these guys again. Well, we are looking forward to seeing you guys this summer and uh, Labor Day at the Soaring Eagle is going to be a massive show to wrap up this summer. And uh, can't wait to see you guys back here in Michigan, man. Yeah, uh, looking forward to it for sure. Awesome. Thank you, Mike, man. I appreciate you taking some time. Yeah, anytime, man. Thanks for the support. All right, dude. See ya. Yeah, take care.